value, I'm going to do absolute value, absolute value of B again, because you deal with, we've already dealt with what happens if it's negative. That's a reflection across the y axis. But if my B value is greater than 1, anybody remember what that does? Horizontal stretch of compression? It's a horizontal stretch of compression. Now remember, if it's with x, it's backwards. So if it's greater than 1, which one would it be? Stretch or compression? It's a compression. And we're going to do one in a minute. Even though we don't deal with them very often in here, we'll, we'll do one. And if the absolute value of B is between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction or a decimal, then it's a horizontal stretch. Now they asked on question 2. So all of these, they were implying that they were common law, because they didn't put a base here. So then they asked them question two. What if we have a different base? What if it's log base two, or natural log? What do A, B, C, and D do then? Same thing. Nothing changes. They are the same transformations regardless of what kind of function it is. So, the same transformation. Okay, so we are actually going to transform. So if you flip to the top of the next page, I do not, I, I know that you plug these in your calculator, but I don't want you to because there's another way to do them and I know what class you take each year and I know what you need to know. So they give you the graph of this first one is common log and they want you to transform it. So A, B, and then we'll flip the new C. They're all transformations of common log um, function. So the first thing I want you to do, whether it's common log or log base 2 or log base e or anything, find critical points. So in this case, there's a critical point right here at 1, 0. And the next critical point for common law is over here at 10, 1. And we call it critical points because they cross at definite grid lines, so it makes them easier to see. Okay, now I'm going to write out every single step here. You do not have to do this for every problem when you do the assignment. But for right now, write it out so you've got an idea of what's so the first thing we want to do is look at the function and identify what kind of transformations are happening. So what does this 3 do? It stretches it out. So vertical stretch by 3. And what is the plus 2? or a y issue? That's a y issue. So my y values, this is going to affect my y values. Now, if I look at that 3, it's in front of that log. What mathematical operation is that? A number in front of something. Multiply. So my x values are going to be multiplied by 3. So my new critical point is going to be the point negative 1, 0. 
So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. This point, it was a 10, but I have to subtract 2. So it would be an 8. What was a 1 is now a 3. So my next critical point is going to be at 8, 3. The only other thing you might want to identify is where your asymptote is. So where did my asymptote used to be? And now it's shifted to negative 2. So my asymptote is actually going to be right here. So when I go in to draw my graph, I can kind of sketch it from closer to that asymptote. So, so that's my transform graph. Are we okay? So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to, it's, the, it's still the same common log. So my two critical points, 1, 0, and 10, 1, still apply. Those are on my original. So this time, what kind of transformations are Right 3 up 4. So right 3 is an x value.
Okay, so on problem number four, the only thing that has changed, the process is exactly the same. They just gave me log base two. This is kind of nice though because if you look at log base two, I have way more critical points. You only have to choose two of the critical points to use, but uh, one zero is always a critical point on a log of regression. Um, two one is a critical point on this one. Four two is a critical point, and so is eight. So you can use any of those four points when you do your transformations. So I'm going to keep going because you're going to come back and do these. They're just exactly like what we did. All right, let's look at number five though. The only difference between number five and what we've been doing is that it's log base E or natural log. If you put natural log in your calculator, you will notice go to the table, other than our first critical point of one zero, which is a critical point on all logarithms, all of the rest of the values are irrational. This natural log of the LN. Yeah. And that's technically log base E. And that's because log that's because E is irrational. So what that means is when you're choosing your critical points, you are going to have an exact point for this one. So use the closest one is this one. Eight two it's 2.07. So when you're doing natural log, you're, you're going to use 1, 0. And go ahead and use 8, 2. But understand that it's not really 2. It's really 2.07. But it's, it's close enough for an approximate of what the graph is. So when you do 5A and B, um, those are your two critical points. Problem number six, it's the reverse. They give us the graph and they ask us to explain the transformation and come up with a function. So let's look at the graph. Notice that they have given you three critical points. So I have a point, this is my original function right here. And they've given me a point here, here, here. On my new function, they've identified those points here, here, here. So is there a stretch happening at all? No. Is there a vertical shift happening at all? No. The only thing that's happening is a shift left 5. So that's my transformation. Left 5. Which means if I'm going to write the function, it was log base 3 of x. So it's going to be with the x plus 5. Exactly because it's not constant. Okay. I, 
Did you, from here, from this point? Yeah. It works from this point because the point is at zero. But it wouldn't work between a point that was not on zero. Okay, so if I'm vertically stretched by four and my original function is log this three max, it's now just four. They wrote it in just regular function notation, but they gave you the logarithm on the graph. So it's log base 4 of x. What does this minus 2 imply that we're doing today? Right 2. Right 2. So that means my asymptote has moved from 0 to where? 2. So that means my asymptote is now at x equals 2. Does that affect the range of this graph at all? So my range is still going to be all the numbers and negative infinity. That affects your domain. Yeah, my domain used to be zero to infinity, and now two. And neither of which are included because two is an asymptote. So b is similar. They give you the function right here. Uh, yeah. It says graph each dimension. So you'll, you'll graph it. All right. Let's do c. C is one because this one's a little. We've not dealt with this very much. Okay. Okay. This could also be written like this: f of one half times x. So this is actually plus you a horizontal stretch. Now remember, what's with x is always backwards. So right here, the way it's written, it looks like you're going to take all of your x values and divide them by 2. But it's backwards. I'm not going to divide them by 2. You're going to multiply them by 2. So I can take the three critical points that they gave me of my original function. Now this first one, I don't really know what it is because it's not on the grid mark. But this one is. It's the point 0, 1. Sorry, 1, 0. Um, and this one is the point 4, 1. I am going to take my x values and multiply them by 2. Because right here it says divide by 2. And whatever's with x is always backwards. So if it says x values, you're going to multiply by 2. Because it says divide by 2. And anytime it's with x, it's backwards. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is going to become the point 2, 0. And this is going to become the point 8, 1. Those are my two new critical does this multiplying something by my x value, does that change my asymptote at all? No, no because what is 0 times 2? Zero. 0. So your asymptote is still at 0, but these two critical points have changed. The point 2, 0, and the point 8, 1. So now it's going to be stretched out. It's not going to look a whole lot different. It's almost like they just took the end, the arrowhead, and they just pulled it sideways a little bit. So it kind of made it, made it look a little flatter and stretched it out a little bit. My asymptote is still at zero. My range is still negative infinity to positive infinity. My domain is still zero to infinity because my asymptote is still at zero. All right. Um, problem number eight. They just tell you where the vertical asymptote is. You have to figure out what the new function will be. That's easy enough. Move your asymptote graph in. Problem B, or number A. They gave me three critical points, and then they told me what happens to them. And you have to try and come up with what the transformation is. What do you notice when you look at those three critical points? What's the first thing you notice? They all have. It's just 
just a different way of telling you what an asset is. So you come up with a function, sketch it. So you 